Rob. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. I'm Daisy, and I'm terrified. Uh, please be nice to me. Um, OK. The first time I realized I was unsafe, I was 12 years old and sat in the office of a teacher being told not to wear knee-high socks because it could distract the male faculty. The second time I realized I was unsafe, I was 15, hanging out with a sober man, my boyfriend at the time, after I had finished a bottle of wine. I'd told him no countless times before that night, but that night I couldn't say no, and he made the decision for me because he wanted to. I woke up to a string of texts detailing events I had no memory of, while he refused, and still refuses, to take responsibility for the fact he has caused me years of trauma. My friends didn't believe me. That night means nothing to him, but it means everything to me. I see him in restaurants, I see him in clubs, I see him doing his weekly shop on a Wednesday afternoon, I see him laughing with his friends, of course I don't feel safe. My rapist was popular. My rapist wasn't a figure hiding in an alley, waiting to take advantage. He wasn't missing an eye, wearing a trench coat, or holding a knife. He was a man who I trusted. He looked like he could have been anyone's brother or best friend. When I was 16, I was groomed and assaulted by a 20-year-old man who hit me so hard one night that I still have to see an osteopath for the damage that he did to my jaw. What's even more horrifying than all of these experiences is that I am not special. I am not one case in a hundred, I am not even one case in ten, I am one case in five women that will be raped or sexually assaulted in their lifetime. That number increases to almost every single woman you will meet when you extend the parameters to include unwanted and inappropriate advances, harassment, catcalling and violence. I heard a story of a woman who was coerced into sex she did not want to have by a man who told her that, she, that he loved her. I have a friend who's afraid to walk alone after her boyfriend, nine years her senior, grabbed her by the throat during an argument. I know a woman who was scared to walk alone even before she was dragged into a house from the street and raped. I have a close friend who said no almost every time her boyfriend coerced her into sex, three times a day for a month and a half. He couldn't understand that anything that isn't a yes is a no. Five other women have told me similar stories about him. He has a literal notch on his belt for every one. When I was 13, a man with a known history of sexual violence against children was found in my garden after accosting and harassing me online. I know a boy who was forced into sex by his girlfriend in the bathroom of a party. I've been told of a woman who trusted a male friend to get her a taxi, being followed into her house by the same male friend she trusted not to hurt her, but he did anyway. I heard a story of a girl, too drunk to stand, being taken home by a man who invited all of his friends to come too. The thing is, these are just women I know. Women that I am close to on an island with a very small population. On an island who boasts its streets are safer than any place in the mainland, the same streets where every one of these incidents that I've detailed occurred. Sarah Everard is not just another news article about the violence we are scared of. Sarah Everard could have been any one of us. Sarah Everard took every precaution we all take. She walked down well-lit streets to assure her safety. She texted friends and told them she would let them know when she was home safe. She wore comfortable clothing, easy to walk in. Sarah Everard was murdered by a man expected to protect and serve us. She is not just another statistic. I didn't know how to end this, and in a way, it makes sense. The trauma I suffered will never completely disappear. There is no concise ending for this. So instead of writing a conclusion where there can't be one, I'm going to ask every single person here to start holding your male friends accountable for their actions. Whether you're a man or a woman, I'm asking you to police your friends. If you see someone acting in a way you wouldn't accept being done to your daughter, your sister, your mother, say something. Those words too often turn into actions. It's everybody's responsibility to make this island safe. Is silence not an act of violence too? Start checking up on girls who seem vulnerable on a night out. Start teaching your sons that boys will not be boys. They will be held accountable for their actions. It is not enough to teach women to keep themselves safe. There will always be another woman in a darker street with less friends who is less sober I want to keep her safe as much as I want to be safe. 
Above anything else, remember that Sarah Everard was a friend and daughter, a sister, a girlfriend. She was a person, not just another murdered woman. There will never be an end to these issues until we start making changes. Thanks.